Guys, what's going on? Coach Brian Klepak here with criticalbench.com. I'm gonna show you some stuff about hip mobility and all the things that tie into hip flexibility and strength and all, like, all things like that. So as you know, most of everybody has a tendency to sit too long, just like this. They sit in this position. I mean, this is actually a good position if you're sitting all day, but what usually does everybody look like when they sit? Just imagine a keyboard right in front of me, driving in a car, Look how round in my back is. And this is a typical position of nearly everybody in the working class. Now what happens when we go from this seated position to a stand? Everything in this front part of my body still stays tight. So the problem lies in with that is that when we get up from that seated position, everything in this area, especially the hip flexors, is just so crunched up. And what we need to do to eliminate kind of pain uh, irritability in, in just the entire front part of the body is we need to loosen it up. But before we loosen it up, a lot of people just go right to exacerbating the problem. They go to things like the deadlift. So we just saw me sitting down, crunch position, hip flexors are, are contracted. And then what happens when we go here? We go to a deadlift without properly warming up. Now look at my hips. My hips are, sh are forward. And then what happens? I hyperextend my hips, causing some pain. If you're, not, if you're not properly warmed up in those hip flexors, I guarantee you're going to get some hip pain. Maybe not now, maybe not ever, but there's always going to be a little nagging limitation in those hips if you don't properly treat it. So guys, I'm going to show you a lot of stuff that's going to be really effective in opening those hips up, increasing mobility and flexibility in those hips. One of the things that I always recommend to my athletes using one of these things. It's called a foam roller. If you've never seen one, do a quick Google search on foam rollers and this thing will radically change your training and also your recovery. So before we do any kind of work, I don't care if you're young, old, beginner, or advanced, you're gonna be on this before you do anything. So this can be used, again, we're just, this, this is an awesome tool to use for the entire body, but for today, we're just gonna be working on the hip flexors. And this is the best stretch and foam rolling technique used for your hip flexors. So all you do is put it on the floor. So our hip flexors are right here, very small region of the body, right here. We're just gonna apply pressure onto the roller. Roll back and forth. Now guys, notice my body is turning a little bit, trying to get the outside of the hip flexors, but also the inside. Spend about a half minute or so on each side. So I'm focusing on my left hip flexor right here, upper part of the quad. And now the same side, so I just rolled out my hip, my left hip. I'm gonna flip on over. I'm gonna put the roller underneath my, my tailbone as gracefully as I can. Lean back. Now what's gonna happen on this? I'm gonna try to stretch out my left hip, hip flexor. Since I just rolled it out, it's loosened up. Extend both legs out. And now what I'm going to do, I'm going to stretch out, pull my right knee into my chest. The reason why I'm pulling my right knee is that because the right side is connected to the left side. And your hip flexor is controlled from that right glute. So as I pull onto my right, pull the right knee into my chest, I can feel a tremendous stretch in my left hip flexor here. Now the reason why I have the roller underneath me is to elevate my hips, getting into that hyperextended position. Gradually pulling into my chest. Again, 20 to 30 second hold. And then release. And then you're gonna do the same thing on the other side. Starting with the hip flexor roll. Again, get right into that, that hip crease. 20 to 30 seconds. Flip on over again. Right on the tailbone. Extend the legs back out. So I just rolled out my right hip. I'm gonna pull my left knee into the chest. Again, I'm feeling a deep stretch in my right hip flexor, also my left glute. Ease into the stretch, hold it for about 20 to 30 seconds. Guys, that's just one hip flexor rolling technique you can use uh, with the foam roller. This is, again, probably the most important thing you can use to stretch out your hip flexors. Also, just a lot of the stuff that we're gonna cover here in the next few minutes is really gonna help open up those hip flexors. So we just rolled out the hip flexors, stretched it out, also stretched out a little bit of part of the groin and glute. 
Now this one is what I consider the most effective hip flexor stretch ever. It's, uh, it looks familiar to a lot of people. It's, it's called the world's greatest stretch minus the twist. So what you're gonna do in this position, get in a long lunge stride, keeping the back knee up off the floor. Now guys, there's a couple progressions to this. I'll start off with the easiest first. If you're not comfortable putting the, bringing the back knee up off the floor, you could put something like the foam roller under your knee to help support. So what I'm doing now is I'm gonna try to drop my body down as low as I can to the floor and hold this for about 20 to 30 seconds again. So as you can see, my right hip is fully extended. I'm trying to relax in that hip. Now notice my left leg is pretty, pretty far forward. That's gonna open up the glute, the opposite glute. Again, that, this is somewhat beginner. Get, eliminate the roller, keeping the back knee up off. Now I'm able to sink down deeper into that stretch. This will rely a little more on the upper body strength just to hold you up. I'll show you guys on the other side. So for the little more beginner, not as severe as uh, of a stretch, again, my, now my right leg is forward, pointing straight ahead. My left leg, my back leg, is facing the ground on the roller, trying to relax that hip, sinking down deep as you can go. So for a little more advanced, get rid of the roller, keep that back knee up, and then sink that hip into the floor. Hold that for 20 to 30 seconds. That's another awesome hip flexor stretch to uh, just get you loose, loose for, loose for movement, running, sports, whatever. Now, if you're experiencing any time back pain, go through the hip flexor stretches, the, the hip mobility drills that we've, uh, we've been pumping out videos on. But now, if you have some back pain, this, one's, this, this is the exercise for you. Gonna go to a half kneel position, 90 degrees in both knees, so a 90-90. Tall spine, shoulders pulled back. And now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna rock forward. But now, most importantly, I'm gonna take, so as you can see, my left, left leg is forward, I'm gonna take my right hand, place it on the outside of my left knee, and then I'm gonna pull, pushing against my left leg, pull my body to the direction of the front leg. Hold this for about 20 to 30 seconds, release. Rock back in those hips, rock forward, twist. Twisting hard to that leg that's in front. Now if you can tell, my left leg, is pointing straight ahead. My right leg is pointing straight down. I'm not doing anything funky with my, my positioning. Do the same thing on the other side. Now, if you want to intensify the stretch, again, so let's get set up first. 90 degrees, both knees, rock, hip, rock the hips forward. Outside, pull your body to the leg that's in front. So now if you want to intensify the stretch, reach up as high as you can. I'm gonna start hitting the, the thoracic spine, a little bit above the shoulder girdle. Release, rock back. Do it again, rock forward. Twist, extend. Now guys, don't forget to breathe doing this stuff too. Because what your diaphragm does is uh, as you breathe, your lungs expand, diaphragm gets shifted around a little bit. I'll do this one more time, because it does feel good. Even if you don't have back pain, this is a great thoracic spine movement as well as a hip flexor exercise to really loosen up the body, preparing you for movement. All right, so that's got back pain covered. Do that movement before you lift, you'll feel good. Even if you don't lift, if you sit in a chair all day, do that one a couple times throughout the day, you'll feel good. Now for this one, for all those squatters and deadlifters out there, this is an awesome mobility drill for the hip flexors to prepare you for squats. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna get in a somewhat 90 degree bent, twisted back knee. So left leg's forward, my right leg is underneath me with my foot underneath the body. So what I'm gonna do is tuck my tailbone underneath me, a posterior pelvic tilt. So here's your hips, front, back, tilt your hips back. And then what you're gonna do is sit down as low as you can. And then you're gonna extend forward and drive those hips forward feeling a deep stretch on the inside of your hip flexor or your adductors. Back down, drive forward. 
back down, drive forward. Still maintaining a, a posterior pelvic tilt. That's where you get the most out of that, that movement. So let's do the same thing on the other side. Right leg forward, left leg bent underneath the body, tilting those hips back, rock down, rock forward and drive those hips forward, still tilting those hips back, back down again, hips go forward, do it one more time. Hips go forward, maintaining that tailbone tucked underneath you. So guys, if you want to improve your squat, I guarantee if you do that movement before you lift, you're definitely going to feel a lot better. Now for, if you're not a squatter, like say you're, you're someone who runs a lot, this is going to be an awesome exercise to help open up those hips if you're a runner. Even if you're not a runner, guys, all these exercises are going to be good for everybody, but especially runners, this particular movement here. Okay, so this one, it's similar to the back twist, what we just did. We're just going to eliminate the back twist because when you run, as you know, your, your hips contract a lot. You bring the, your quad up, your knee up to the chest if you're a sprinter. So we really need to open that up. So this is what a lot of people refer to as a, lun a runner's lunge or a runner's stride. So 90-90 to start. Rock forward as far as you can. Rock back. Simple as that. Rock forward, rock back. Now take a note and look at my back leg, my right foot. What you don't see happening is as I rock forward, my foot is not moving. I'll show you what I mean by that. So a lot of people have I've seen over the years, as they rock forward, that foot turns out. You see that? That just means they've got some tightness going on, either the hamstring or inner thigh. Because once you start rotating the, the joint angles of the body, even if you roll in like this, it completely changes the dynamic of the stretch. So runners, straight line. Obviously you want everything to be symmetrical on both sides. So if I'm doing this, this is not applicable to runners because runners don't run off angle. So when you're doing this movement runners, and I, I've seen them many, many times just because they don't warm up properly, they have problems keeping those legs straight. So be intentional with this movement. Get set up first, 90 degrees in the front, somewhat 90 degrees in the back, rock forward, rock back. Rock forward, rock back. Do one more time. Rock forward, deep as you can go, rock back. So guys, if, if you are a runner, use that exercise. I promise your hips are gonna feel a lot better. Do it before you run, even after you run too. Just because, again, everybody sits all day and uh, we just need to open up those hips. And runners are notorious for having tight hips. But if you do that move, you're gonna be good to go. So we just warmed up the hips, we loosened up the hip flexors, the adductors, and all, everything that goes on with tightness you know, associated from sitting too much. Now I'm going to show you some exercises that you can do uh, to increase strength in your hip flexors, to increase some speed for all those runners out there, or even explosive athletes who have got to get off the line quick, or uh, have a rapid rate of return on, on the field. We're going to use one of these guys around our ankles, typical resistance band. Uh, you can get these at most, uh, most sport, sporting goods stores. These things are awesome, not just for this particular move, but just in general, good hip health and good hip stability and strength comes from these bands. This one is just called an ankle band march or an explosive knee drive if, if, uh, if, you, know, if you, uh, you, or you can make, even make up your own name. So matches my shoes, did not plan that, but I think it's kind of cool that they match. So guys, the plan is this, as you, know, as you run, or even as you jump, you bring the knees up, you explosive knee drive, okay? Takes a little bit of getting adjusted to just to make sure the band doesn't fly off. But what, essentially you're gonna accelerate position, bring the knee up to the chest. Good, same thing on the other side. Do that a handful of times after you run, before you run, or on a leg day, you're really gonna start strengthening those hip flexors. Another great thing to do is called just a supine glute bridge, single leg. So what you're gonna do on this one, find a bench, it could be a, a table, a chair, a bed, if, uh, if you don't have access to a bench. So you're gonna 
place the shoulders on top of the bench here. Glute bridge, nice flat uh, parallel with the floor. Now what I'm gonna do is bring the knee up, back down, up, down. So I'm in a glute bridge, but I'm marching in place, bringing the, hip, the knee all the way up, activating those hip flexors. Guys, the main thing on this one is to keep these hips up parallel with the floor. So really focus on engaging the glutes. Pull the knee in. Now if you want to advance it a little bit, throw this on around your knees or your ankles or your feet and do the same thing. You can even attach it to a pulley on a cable, cable crossover, and do the same thing. But the main thing, again guys, I've said it already a few times, keeping those hips up. Because if I drop my hips down here, look, my, my hips are already flexed. You gotta be in a neutral or a slightly extended hip position to effectively do that movement. So I'll demonstrate now with the, uh, not a cable, um, a resistance band. So this one, you're really gonna emphasize hip flexor and hip extensor movements here. So as you can see, standard resistance band, I'm gonna attach it to my foot in a way that doesn't fly off if you need to double up. It's so like that, okay? So what I'm gonna do is lay back. Other leg, the non-used leg is just hanging out on the floor, uh, by your side on the floor. Pull the knee in and back out. I notice my leg is able to go into a hyperextended position. Pull in. Do the same thing on the other side. Now this is probably one of the best hip flexing, hip flexor strengthening exercises you can do. It takes a little bit to get set up, but once you get in, in position, you can feel a hip flexor firing very quick. Might not be the most glamorous exercise out there, but I promise if you do that, incorporate that part of your leg routine, your explosive power routine, your hip flexors are gonna get just so much stronger. But don't forget, you gotta warm up the hips before you do all this strength work, just because again, going, I'm gonna say it again, we sit way too much. Shortened up, and what happens when we start strengthening the hip flexor? Hip flexor will ball up, just like your bicep. The more curls you do, you get that nice ball on your arm. If you don't properly stretch out that arm, you're gonna, your arm's never gonna be fully extended. You see those guys around there, their arms are always bent just because they don't fully extend. Same thing applies to our hip flexors. If we don't focus on stretching out the hip flexors and all you do is strengthen the hip flexors, they're just gonna ball up and you're gonna even screw up your posture even more. Another great exercise that you can do to help really strengthen those hip flexors is a knee tuck on using a stability ball. So you're gonna start in a prone position, push up position, knees on top of the ball, gonna engage your core, engage your arms. Now what you're gonna do is roll the ball in quick, out, in quick, out, in quick, out. So that, that exercise is not only good for your hip flexors, but it's also awesome for your core, shoulders, and even chest. So that's, incorporate that part of your routine, you're definitely gonna help strengthen those hip flexors. There you go guys, hip flexor, lengthening, stretching, strengthening, everything in between. Guys, if you like that, check out this free report made just for you. It's all on Olympic lifting, guaranteed to improve your numbers. Thanks for checking us out, guys. Have a good one.